Okay, so lesson number three is going to talk about circumference and the area of a circle. Um, both of these uh, formulas can be found actually on your reference table, which, which we'll see a little bit later in this chapter. For right now, we're just going to assume that you know them from middle school. Um, but if you don't, we're going to keep giving them to you as we go through the lesson here. So the opening exercise kind of shows us one of these composite figures where we have a rectangle and a semicircle. So it says a garden is to be enclosed by a combination of a rectangle and a semicircle. Fencing is to be put up around the garden, but not along the dashed line. How many feet of fencing would be needed? Round to the nearest foot. So because we're talking about fencing along the outer edge of this garden, this question is really talking about perimeter. And remember, circumference is really the perimeter of a circle. So let's first talk about the sides of this rectangle. So this one side is 17, this one side is 12. That means I also know this side is 17. I also know that the diameter of the circle is 12. Because if this length is 12, I then know this dotted length is 12. Therefore, the radius of the circle is 6. The reason why I want to know the radius is because the circumference formula is 2 pi r. So if I find the circumference of the whole circle, even though we're talking about a semicircle, I can then divide the circumference by 2 to find the circumference of the semicircle. So if I find the circumference, we have 2 times pi times 6. So I have the circumference is 12 pi. Now if I do 12 pi in my calculator, remember to use the pi button, don't actually use 3.14, I get a circumference of 37.699. Now since everything here is nearest foot, I'm going to round this to the nearest foot, so 38 feet. So now I know this outer edge is 38. So the perimeter of this entire garden is going to be 12 plus 17 plus 17 plus 38. So the perimeter of this garden is going to be whatever that adds up to. So 84. So you would need 84 feet of fencing to enclose this garden. That then says, how would you describe the perimeter of a circle? We would say that is going to be the circumference. So the circumference of a circle. For a circle whose diameter is D and whose radius is R, the circumference C is c equals pi d or c equals 2 pi r. Personally, I like this version of the formula better only because the area formula requires us to know the radius, so we might as well use the radius in the circumference formula too. Now let's talk about why the circumference formula is what it is. So it says unrolling the circumference of a circle will always result in a distance equal to the length of three diameters plus a little bit more, no matter what the diameter of the circle is. So why does this happen? So let's think about the formula, right? It's pi times the number of diameters. Well, when we say something like three plus a little bit more, doesn't that sound familiar to 3.14 or pi? So there's this relationship with the number of diameters that fit along the outer edge of a circle and this number pi. Why is pi is in all these circle equations? Example one says a designer needs to create a perfectly circular necklace. The necklaces each have to have a radius of 10 centimeters. What is the largest number of necklaces that can be made from 1,000 centimeters of wire? So the first thing we have to do is figure out well how many centimeters of wire is required to make one necklace. 
and then we can figure out how many necklaces we can make with a thousand centimeters of wire. So one thing we definitely want to check for is units. We see both are the same units, so we don't have to do any conversions or anything like that. So one necklace has a circumference of 2 pi r. So one necklace has a circumference of 2 pi times 10, or a circumference of 20 pi. Now the one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to plug that into my calculator because I don't want to round and then round again. That would be double rounding. We keep talking about that in these lessons. So I'm just going to leave this in what we're going to call in terms of pi. So that tells us that one necklace is 20 pi centimeters in length. So if I take my total amount of wire that I have, 1,000 centimeters, and divide it by 20 pi, that's going to tell me how many of these necklaces I can actually create. So if I divide 1,000 divided by 20 pi, I wind up getting 15.915 dot dot dot. Now, Normally, if I was looking at that number and it wasn't in a word problem, we'd say we'd round that answer to 16. The problem is I can't round this to 16 because that would be adding to a number of pieces of wire that I just don't have. To make 16 necklaces, I would actually need more than 1,000 centimeters of wire. So for this problem, the maximum number of necklaces we can make is 15. Let's talk about area. So the area of a circle. One of the things that we know about the area of a circle is we know the formula. We talked about it the other day. It's pi r squared. Let's talk about kind of why it is what it is. So it says in the diagram below, a circle is divided into congruent slices. Each slice of this circle is called a sector. Think of it like a pizza. Right? So if I order a pizza from you know, Leo's Pizza in Cornwall, I know that I can get a pizza cut into eight equal size slices. Each one of those slices is a sector, right? So looking at this picture, each one of these little slices of pizza is a sector of the pizza. Now, if we were to take these slices and rearrange them, so if you notice, um, it goes from blue to yellow, yellow to blue. So if we take all the blue pieces and put them facing one direction, and take all the yellow pieces and have them facing the opposite direction and kind of put them together, we start to see that the shape that's created kind of looks like a parallelogram. Right? So if I was to just take a different color pen here for a second and just make this as like a parallelogram shape, we could see it's starting to get that parallelogram look. Now, if you were to look at x, right, this distance would represent half of the circumference of the circle. So the circumference of a circle we know is 2 pi r. So this value of x would actually be just pi r because it would be only half of the sectors, right? Just the yellow sectors would represent half because each one of these little pieces represents the part of the circumference of the circle of that sector. So how would I describe the value of x? That would be half the circumference. Now, if you look at this other side, this other side of this kind of parallelogram-ish shape that we have represents the distance from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle of any of these sectors. So this is actually the radius. So now we have this parallelogram or rectangle that has a height of r and a length of pi r. 
So it says using the formulas for circumference of a circle and the area of a rectangle, what can we determine about the area of the circle? So I know this is starting to look more and more like a rectangle, so we can say that the area of a rectangle is length times width. So the area of this shape is going to be pi r times r. Well, if I have r times r, that gives us the area formula of pi r squared. That's kind of like a proof as to where the formula comes from. Luckily for you, we're never going to ask you about that. The only thing that I have seen, though, on the Regents exam before is we've seen this kind of situation where they take a circle and they show it as these pieces all separated out. So you should start to really understand that that's just representing the same area, right? Although we took the shape and we put it into a different format, it's still going to be an area that's the same. So let's take a look at example two. Example two says triangle ABC is inscribed into circle M. Remember the word inscribed means all of the corners or all of the vertices of the shape are on the other shape. So if you look A, B, and C are all on the circle. It says angle B is a 90 degree angle. It says BC is 24. It says the radius AM is 13. We know one thing about circles is that any radius is the same. So that means MC is also 13, meaning AC is actually 26. And then it says to determine the area of the shaded region. So to find the area of the shaded region, my plan is going to be to subtract the area of the circle minus the area of the triangle. I know to do it in that order because the circle is bigger than the triangle. So to find the area of the circle, I'm going to do 2 pi r squared. No, just pi r squared. My bad. So to find the area of the circle, I'm going to do pi r squared. The radius was 13. They kind of told us that. So I have pi times 13 squared, where the area of the circle is equal to 169 pi. Again, I'm not going to evaluate that because I don't want to round it. So I'm just going to leave it in terms of pi until I find my answer. Then I can round my answer. The area of the triangle is equal to 1 half times the base, which is 24 times the height. Now, we don't know the height of this triangle. It didn't tell us. It doesn't tell us what AB is. So now we have to do some thinking. How could I find the missing side of a right triangle if I'm given two of the sides? So I could use Pythagorean theorem. So I could say 24 squared plus B squared equals 26 squared. And if we do some quick calculations, we can figure out what B is. So if I do 24 squared, that's 576 plus B squared equals 26 squared, which is 676. If I subtract 576 from both sides, I get 100. Therefore, B is 10. We've done Pythagorean theorem enough. I don't think I need to spend too much time going through that. So now if I do half of 24 times 10, I get 120. So the area of the triangle is equal to 120. So if I want to find the area of the shaded region, I'm going to take 169 pi minus 120. Now that is actually an acceptable answer. We would consider that answer in terms of pi. I could also find the area of the shaded region by typing that in my calculator and seeing what decimal we get. Since it does say to the nearest whole number, that's kind of telling us to round it. So if I do 169 pi minus 120, I get 410.929 dot dot dot. So we can round that to 411.
And that's it. So hopefully we understand the circumference and the area of a circle, right? Your homework assignment is given below. Notice question one, if you're having trouble with the picture for question one, look back at what we did here in the notes. I'm hoping that'll help you identify what you're looking at. All right, we give you radiuses and stuff so you could actually plug in the radius in those two places and hopefully understand what that question's asking you, okay? In class tomorrow, we'll go through these questions and see if you have any problems that you're looking at or there's anything that you want us to uh, go over. Hopefully this video helped.